Well, hello there, folks. This is Lyage, and welcome to a Monster Hunter Rise playstyle guide. In this series, we will be exploring unique and interesting ways to play each of the game's 14 different weapon types. In each video, I will be covering a specific build or playstyle for a given weapon that may just make it feel completely different. Whether you've played the weapon for 100 hours or are picking it up for the first time, you might just discover a cool new way to play. As a disclaimer, these videos will not be full weapon tutorials. I will be going over a few key techniques and combos relating to the particular playstyle, but to learn about everything a weapon has to offer, there are already some great tutorials out there. I am also not claiming that any of these playstyles will be the most efficient ways to play, but I have the hope that they will provide a fun change of pace for your hunts. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, uh, hi. I didn't see you there. So, uh, I guess today we have a playstyle guide for the Charge Blade. Now, as you may have figured, I am a big fan of this whole chainsaw thing you can do with the weapon. For a while now, I have wanted to try to come up with a playstyle with a heavy focus on this particular ability. Unfortunately, when trying to do this, I ran into a bit of a problem. You see, the Charge Blade's chainsaw mode is just way too weak. When trying out a few builds to take advantage of this mode, I kept getting abysmal times against the easiest of monsters. However, it may just so happen that for these builds, I was taking the wrong approach. With the 3.0 update, I thought I would try to go all out to make a build to get as much power as possible out of the chainsaw. So when I originally tried to make a build for the chainsaw mode, I tried to focus on status ailments which I thought could be inflicted rather quickly with our rapid hit potential. Unfortunately, the biggest problem with all these builds was that the damage was far too low. It was only with the release of the 3.0 update that I realized, why not focus on elemental damage for this mode? You see, when it comes to elemental damage, you inflict a certain amount per hit regardless of your motion values. Therefore, faster attacking weapons can rack up a lot more elemental damage with their rapid hits. Had I realized this sooner, I may have had some success earlier with an elemental build, but now that we're here in 3.0, I can knock this out of the park. Here we have a full set of the lovely Valstrax gear, weapon included. If we want silly amounts of elemental damage, then this is a pretty good place to start. Let's go over our skills. First of all, I have gemmed in max level dragon attack for a large boost to our dragon element damage. Due to the nature of the Valstrax armor, we can only have a setup this nice for the dragon element. A build for a different element would require a different armor set, but you would probably still want to max out the elemental attack skill for said element. Speaking of the Valstrax armor, next up we have the armor's signature skill, Dragonheart. At max level this skill will activate when we are below 80% health, which isn't really that big of a deal. Now what we get out of this skill is a ton of elemental resistance and a 10% attack boost, which is quite decent. However, concerning our elemental damage, the real kick we get out of this skill is from the fact that it will inflict us with Dragon Blight. Let's back up real quick and look at our weapon. If we check out the Rampage skills, we can see the unique Valstrax Soul skill. This skill tells us that we gain a 20% damage boost to our Dragon Element attack when inflicted with Dragon Blight. So when we have Dragon Heart active, this will give us not only a 10% attack boost, but a 20% element boost. And we aren't done with synergies yet. In addition to these boosts, our armor also comes with the Resentment skill. This is another 15 attack when our health bar has any red on it. That means if we take damage to activate Dragonheart, we will get a small boost from this skill too. Finally, we have the Resuscitate skill, which is 20 attack when we have a status. Guess what? Our Dragon Blight counts. Before we move on, let's sum up all the buffs that we get while Dragonheart is active. 
Right now we have 210 attack and 46 dragon. Let's go ahead and take some damage. With all buffs active, we end up with 263 attack and 54 dragon. After our resentment damage heals, we drop down to 248 attack, but that is still quite potent. Oh, but we aren't even done yet. Up next, we have level 3 weakness exploit just hanging out on the armor by default. Since this will give us plus 50% affinity when hitting a weak spot, I decided to lean into this with the addition of critical element. This will boost our elemental damage by yet another 15% when we land crits. To fill in some extra slots, I also threw in some maximum might for another 20% affinity while our stamina is full. Finally, I've got Evade Extender 3 from my God Charm, which I never leave home without, and Load Shells 2 to charge our files to full from yellow. Phew, that was a whole lot to cover for what was basically just an out-of-the-box Valstrax build. Now let's get into our actual playstyle, starting with our switch skills. In our first slot, we have the main focus of this video, the Condensed Spinning Slash, aka the Chainsaw Mode. Maybe this skill pales in comparison to the Condensed Element Slash, but hey, we're here to have fun with it. For our second skill, I will be preferring the default Morph Slash over the Counter Morph Slash. To be honest, this probably doesn't matter much because we won't be doing a lot of regular morphs, but the Counter Morph Slash would likely mess up my flow with its slower timing. Finally, in the third slot, we will be taking Counter Peak Performance over Axe Hopper. Axe Hopper is a fun, stylish move, but peak performance gives us just so much utility that we can't say no to it. Alrighty, time to jump into the basic techniques we will be using for this playstyle. So first things first, when we start a fight, we want to make our shield red. Because this isn't a basic tutorial, we won't go over all the ways to do this, but I usually do it like this. Having a red shield is quite good for us as it will boost the damage of all of our attacks in Chainsaw Mode. Now let's jump into Chainsaw Mode. We activate this by performing a file reload and then pressing and holding the X button during that animation. The moment you see your axe head begin to spin, you can release X and you are now in Chainsaw Mode. We can see this indicated by the glowing red axe icon next to our sharpness gauge. Unlike the charge shield or the charge sword, this mode stays active until you either switch out of axe mode or sheath your weapon. Now what can we do in chainsaw mode? If you notice, whenever you do an attack with your axe, the blade will be spinning. This gives us the option to now hold down the attack button when we perform axe attacks. If we do this, our axe will slow down upon hitting a monster and deal a whole bunch of extra hits as the blade tears through. You can still not hold down the button though if you just want to deal a quick single hit. These chainsaw attacks also give us the neat little bonus of gradually charging our files, which means we don't have to switch out as often. So let's cover a few combos that I have found make great use of the chainsaw mode. For starters, we have a very simple combo that can be performed by endlessly looping the X button. This swings our axe up, then down. This combo is great if you need to hit things up high and also lets you charge your files without using any. If you want to mix in a reposition, we also have the nice dash slam move. After the downswing, we can jump into this move with forward and X for a nice run and attack. We can also do this move from a standstill with the same input. And now for my favorite combo. After an upswing or a dash slam, but not a downswing, press A to perform Element Discharge 2. 
This move performs two swings, and if we hold A, both of them will gain the chainsaw property. In addition, if we have a file, this move will use the file and give us an explosion on each swing. That's two explosions for the price of one. Now after this double swing, we can then hit the X button to do an upswing, which means we can loop right back into another double swing. Therefore, this combo can be looped indefinitely by simply alternating X and A. Now remember how I said that our chainsaw attacks can slowly charge our files? Well, as it turns out, as long as we have one file and hold the button for each hit of this combo, we will always end up having a file ready for our double swing, which is quite a nice bonus. Okay, that was about all I wanted to cover for base moves. You can of course do a whole lot more with the weapon, but I wanted to focus on the chainsaw in particular for this video. Let's however cover both of our silk binds because I think they will provide us with some helpful utility. First, with a press of Z, L, and X, we will perform a morphing advance. This performs a nice wire dash forward and switches you into axe mode regardless of which mode you were in to start with. If you press X or ZR after the dash, you will perform a morph attack into sword mode. If you press A, however, this will take us into our element discharge too. This makes the move both a great repositioning tool and a combo starter for our favorite chainsaw combo. By the way, I didn't realize this until after recording my demo hunt, but this move does have hyper armor, so you could use it to tank some attacks to help proc Dragonheart and Resentment without getting knocked down. Our next silk bind is counter peak performance, and this one is super handy. With a press of ZL and A, we will hold our shield at the ready to block an attack. If an attack hits us during this time, we will block it completely, taking no damage even without guard skill, and our files will be filled to max. After blocking the attack, this move gives us some handy options. First, with X plus A, we can go into our SAED or UAED or big explodey move, whatever you want to call it. If you have a good opening, you can let it fly, but I would more likely use it as a convenient way to refresh our red shield. Now alternatively, if we are good on red shield, then this move also lets us jump right into chainsaw mode. After blocking an attack, just press X, and without having to hold anything down, you will automatically activate chainsaw mode. If you aren't in chainsaw mode, then this move is the fastest way to get into it. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to cover, so it is now time for us to jump into our demo hunt. It is highly convenient for us that Rathian's biggest elemental weakness happens to be Dragon. Otherwise, we would need to pick a different monster or run a completely different build. To start here, we will use Rathian's Roar to hit our counter for a free red shield. Now there's one more thing we want to do before we start fighting, and that's to get ourselves hurt. The damage and poison from the backflip should place us nicely in dragon heart range and even keep resentment active. With a second counter, we are now able to jump right into chainsaw mode, and the fun will begin. Even though using our counter to block an attack will take us out of axe mode, we can reactivate chainsaw mode just as easily. One of my favorite things to do against Rathian's backflip is to use the dash slam to smack her head in the air. Oh man is this combo satisfying when the monster is downed.
And here are our usual friends. I must say getting Bishatan and Puke is probably the worst combo you can get on this quest because they will always be here at the same time. I really don't want to deal with this so we'll just run for it. Because most of our damage earlier was from poison and it has healed, we need to take some more now. I will go ahead and cure this poison though, because I don't want it taking my health any lower than it needs to be. Whoops, that was awkward. Rathian left us hanging on our counter there. Jokes on you, Rathian. I meant to get hit by your tail there to activate resentment. Uh, meant to get hit by that one too. And I hear someone screaming at me, so I better end this hunt quick. And perfect timing. So that will do it for our hunt, I must say that our build was quite effective. Now unfortunately this build probably won't be the best for all monsters since it relies on the dragon element. However I do feel that other elemental builds should still be somewhat viable with this playstyle, they just won't be quite as cool. Overall while focusing only on the chainsaw mode may not be the most optimal way to play the weapon, it is still quite satisfying. Anyways this will bring us to the end of our guide. As usual if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. Also don't forget to check the description of any of my videos for links to my other platforms such as my discord server. Okay, that's about it for now, so thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.